Hello everyone, it is Malachi with Essence Cartoon. And today we're going to be talking about Photoshop Beta. Um, I will say though, with Photoshop Beta, um, there are some features that are actually worse than it is in the actual Photoshop. Um, especially Generative Fill. Usually you can use Generative Fill to erase things if you don't type anything in the prompts, but now it does some weird stuff. So if you did like using that feature, um, you're not going to want to use it for, you know, Photoshop beta. You're going to want to use your regular Photoshop. All right. So go ahead and click on this here. Um, this is going to bring up the screen where you can do generative fill and do all your AI stuff. So you just click here. Now you can generate an image. You can select the content type. So you can either pick like art or photo. You can put your prompt in. You can even add a reference image. You can add effects, which is really cool. You can see you have like painter, layered paper, um, hyper realistic, uh, digital art. The reference images, they have some that you can pick or you can add your own, which is huge. You couldn't do that with the previous version of Photoshop. And you can just type in something random. Like let's say I want to type in an airplane and hit generate. And then it takes a moment to generate and this is real time. I'm not speeding the video up or anything. And now you have an airplane and it incorporates all the different things that you selected. See it's digital art. You have other things you can change or redo it. You can even um, choose popular because it'll be based on what other people are picking. You have movements. Um, let me see. Actually, before we go into that, you can actually change the prompt. So let's say we want it to be a vintage plane, hit generate. And now we have a vintage plane. And you have three uh, variations. So you can, you have three options. That you can the propellers is kind of odd on that one. So I probably wouldn't use that version. And it creates its own layer, as you can see. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to manipulate photos using AI in Photoshop. So first thing I'm going to do is use the selective tool. And we're just going to draw in a little area here where we want to change what's there. Um, it does show that you can use reference image for this. But what we want to do first is add a pixie. I'm showing this so that way you would know what Photoshop literally cannot pull off, unfortunately. And as you can see, they encounter an issue. The reason why it's encountering an issue is that anything that's fictional cannot be made with this Photoshop beta. It's not like Mid Journey because they're pulling from Firefly and everything in Firefly is real. You're not going to see a dragon in Firefly. So if I'm typing in Pixie, it's going to look really bad. It's like, it's going to look horrible. Like you see that it's a girl with costume on as a pixie. It's not an actual pixie from like a medieval fictional show or something like that. So now that you know these things, you'll know the limitations of what this thing can do. I have tried to use a reference image and even with the reference image of a pixie, it still doesn't perform very well. But let's try doing an elephant. Let's have an elephant like right next to her. So what I'm going to do is type in elephant. You can see I've already drawn the uh, marquee and we'll do pink elephant. Just cause let's see if we can do, let's see if it'll make the elephant pink. And this is real time. So it's generating. And you have the pink elephant. It's kind of pink. You have another, it's not even pink at all there. Let's see what the last. Okay, so this one's the most pink. You can still add a reference image if you really want a pink elephant. Um, but this is uh, the closest. You'll notice that the pink is more closer to the lady that works their shirt. It's like a salmon color instead of a pink color. But you see how that looks better than what we had before. 
So I'm going to show you something else that you can do with this. You can actually click on one of the options you like the most. You click on the three dots and you can click generate similar. And then it's going to generate a similar version of the one you like the most. So like maybe you kind of liked it, but you want to see what else. See if you can get something better than what you like. Now this looks pretty good. It's like her shoulder and arm is kind of on the elephant. Whereas that other one, it was like the shirt was like pulled a bit. Then you got a guy, a random guy in there. This one, the trunk is actually playing with the, uh, playing behind the glass. Gives it some depth. I actually like this one the most. Um, you can upscale it. So you see here, it's like it upscales it. If you click on enhance detail, it'll make it sharper. I wouldn't always do this because if you upscale this, it's going to look sharp and then everything else is going to look kind of not as sharp. Um, so be careful to do it when you're doing that. But as you can see, like the girl that's working there, she doesn't look as sharp, but the elephant is uh, pretty, pretty high definition. So just something to be mindful of. Now we're going to add someone else, like maybe add a coworker. So I'm just going to type in. Let's, have, let's add an Asian girl as well. Get this loading. Okay, so it literally, it literally is adding a girl, which is the right thing. I should have said, let's add a, an Asian woman instead of a girl. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and update that. Um, if you generate similar, it's going to generate the same type of age. It's going to think you just want a different girl and not a lady. So you got to be very specific when you're like specifying your prompts. That's another thing to keep in mind. But notice that she's out of focus, which is great because they're looking at the other pixels of the person being out of focus. Now, okay, now that actually looks like maybe a teenager. And then you have, a, yeah, they look like they work there, but they work, but they do look like teenagers rather than, um, you know, a little girl. All right, so let's try a, a guy on the cash register and then hit generate. And then let's see what pops up. You'll be surprised. Yeah, so not quite sure why it generated a huge stapler. So I'm just gonna put poor. You should always send feedback when you get a bad generation. This will train the model to do better for everyone, actually. You wanna always do this. I know it's kind of time consuming to do that, but this thing, if you were not using AI to do these image manipulations, this would take time anyway. I don't know what that is, like a perfume bottle and then uh, scale, I guess. So yeah, these are really way off. Let's try a guy using the cat treasure. And we'll see what happens. All right, so that is also doesn't work very well. Let's try a guy and we're not going to put anything else. Let's see what happens. And I'm showing you these mistakes only so that way you can see how finicky this software is at the moment. Okay, now we're getting closer. So that looks, this one probably is the best one. Let me see what the other one looks like. Yeah, that, that's not going to work. Gonna... So that looks better. And he's out of focus, which is great. So we have shallow focus and we can enhance the detail and it still looks great. Um, I technically probably wouldn't have enhanced the detail because I thought it looked fine, but just wanted to show you enhancing the detail did make it look even better. So now you have an elephant in this shot and you have a guy that wasn't in the shot before and now he's in the shot. That's how amazing uh, Photoshop beta has got. Let's do another example. Okay, so we have a uh, J. Cole lookalike in this uh, photo and we want to give him some pancakes. So I'm just going to do it normal. I'm just going to add pancakes to his plate and let's see what happens. So we got 
pancakes and honey you got milk I didn't even type in milk for some reason I thought I wanted milk um, we'll go with this pancake but it's a really small pancake it's almost like mini pancakes that you would make in the microwave or maybe like frozen pancakes doesn't look like like homemade pancakes to me at least so what we're gonna do <clears throat> we're now gonna use the reference image feature and I'm gonna find some homemade pancakes online so give me a second to do that and that's how you access it you can just drag and drop or you can choose the image here's my beautiful delicious pancakes so we're gonna use reference image we have it set up you can see it there in the thumbnail and I'm just type in pancakes let's see what happens and there it is it even changed the perspective of the pancakes because the image I found was not in that perspective but it saw that the camera angle is like in this kind of uh, high angle a little bit so you can see you can have three options where you can change the pancakes which is pretty cool so this is really good for if you want to change like what bag you're wearing or you don't want that dog to be in the shot and you want a different dog you can change the dog and everything remember as long as it's a um, reality then this Photoshop beta can handle it if it's anything fantasy it's gonna struggle anything super natural or superpowers and things like that none of it's not gonna handle any of that stuff so. all right so now we're gonna remove the background so you just click on that and now the backgrounds removed this is another feature that you can do you can import a new background or you can generate a background we're going to generate a background and it's going to take in consideration of the lighting the elements that are still visible and replace what we had before with this new background actually instagram has this feature uh instagram stories that you can do the same exact thing that we're so if you ever want to experiment or you don't have Photoshop, you can do this with Instagram now. It's totally for free. All right, let's see what happens. And look at that. Not bad, not bad at all. So that's how you can change the background. There is some things that you might have to color correct like the way his uh, dreads are because it's kind of giving off like a weird lighting but that could be easily fixed with like the adjustment brush so you see I'm accessing the adjustment brush I can even sample the size change the brush size and then I can start painting anywhere actually so let's say I go to curves and you can change the brush size brush tip see there and I can just start painting around. Something to keep in mind, I'm painting under the layer where he is. So I'm doing this just as a demonstration, but technically you wouldn't want to paint under it. You want to paint over it. So that's just a note. But yeah, you can even change things to black and white with this brush. So this adjustment brush is pretty good for that. It won't work on mass layers when you're doing black and white don't really affect it too much. Oh, I guess it does a little bit. But uh, yeah, so that's how the adjustment brush works. There's a little extreme. Oh yeah, you won't be able to see it behind. You only see what I'm doing behind the uh, place of food. But yeah. Something else to keep in mind is the fonts. If you look on here, you can actually look for, click on more fonts. And when you click on more fonts, they will show you all the fonts that are in the library of Adobe, Adobe's font library. And then you can download them directly from the library. Or they didn't have this feature in the previous versions of Photoshop. So this is really, really big. Something else you can do is you can actually change this croissant into a donut. All you have to do is just highlight the uh, croissant, the lasso tool, then do generative fill. And just type in donut and watch how fast this thing changes if 
if it doesn't change it, it's because the layer is underneath another layer. You just have to reorganize the layer. So I'm just going to move it up. And now you have a donut. <laughs>